Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So today I'm coming from the set of the 2023 Gamecock football showcase where these guys, the players here at the university, we take their pictures. They also do videos, uh, creating content for the upcoming season. And behind me, you can see the back of the set. I uh, just broke it down. We just wrapped up day four, got one more day tomorrow. So in this video, we will break down uh, everything that I used over here to create these pictures. We'll take a look at some behind the scenes video and some final results, all after we roll that intro. We had a little fun throwing in the roll that intro uh, reference at the beginning of the video here that some of y'all might have uh, caught. I guess a few of you that have been watching these videos for a while. I did have a couple DMs, people asking uh, if we would throw that back in or if I would throw that back in. So that was a lot of fun. But today I thought I would break this video into probably about four different parts. We will jump back over there to the set, walk around uh, everything there, show all the lights, the backdrop and everything that kind of made these images possible. And then we'll come back here, touch on some of these items that uh, I use that might be different than shoots in the past. And then some of these items I know from doing these videos, I'll just cover them because I know people will be asking questions about them. So I'll go ahead and cover those here as well. And then we'll go into the computer. I'll break down the exposures or the lights, I should say, that build the exposure. So we'll go light by light through the setup just to show uh, kind of the uh, different looks that I could get based off the lighting. And then that takes me into the final part of the video, which I will show just all the different results that we are, were able to get based off of what lights that I turned on and off from the remote on top of my camera. So let's jump back over there and walk around the set and I'll show you everything that I used. This year, I put together a setup that kind of mimics the stadium which is right over this way outside of where we're uh, working this year. This kind of stadium is back over this way. But anyway, so what I've got here are three of the X-Drop backdrops from Westcott. And I've got them stacked together to give us roughly 20 to 24 feet in width. And this will allow the guys to kind of do different things in front of my camera. But I wanted to show uh, this part first and then we'll work our way to the rest of the set. So I'm gonna flip this camera around and walk y'all through. All right, and let's hope the audio is all right. Okay, so I've got three of the backdrops like I mentioned. And <laughs> I'm uh, boosting them up. So these backdrops are eight feet tall, uh, straight out of the box. And with these football players, as big as they are, some of them, that is, I've used the FJ400 cases uh, that I have to give me another 12 inches. And just for the record, this is not a recommended use case, uh, but it is <laughs> working out pretty well for me this week. Uh, okay, so let's go to the light. So I've got four of the FJ400s uh, stacked across here with the one by four rapid box switch. Uh, one by fours, yeah, one by four rapid box switch boxes. And on front of those, I've got the uh, one by four uh, pro light mods uh, strapped in there to give us that stadium light effect. But I just want to show you kind of how I have these stacked. I have them overlapped uh, together, so it gives pretty much a seamless um, transitiony look in the front uh, where you really don't notice uh, based off of the exposure that I'm rocking uh, this week. So let's walk around this side and we'll go kind of from my perspective to start. There you are, you can see those lights and how I bring them across the backdrop. And I've got them uh, positioned to where from my camera angle, I'm working a darker part of the uh, roof of the indoor building here, instead of these bright windows where I've kind of been in past years. So this is the perspective uh, from the camera right down here. And let's just start right here is my uh, key light is boomed on uh, one of my booms here using the Manny Ortiz 36 inch uh, beauty dish. And I've got an FJ 400 in that. You can kind of see hopefully uh, my player mark right there. So I have this light offset slightly, which will give us a little more 
of a dramatic look on the players' faces. Behind me, I've got a seven foot uh, umbrella, Westcott umbrella, with another 400 for my fill light. And I have it kind of countered off to the right, so that way I can control that shadow on the player's face a little bit more. And in some of the instances, I'm actually turning this off and giving us a much more dramatic look to the guys, and, and we're doing that in some of the sequence of shooting. Okay, and so on the right side here, from camera, a player left, but got another umbrella here. This is working like an edge light in conjunction uh, with a FJ200 and with just the reflector on it. So combining these like I like to do, these 200s are a great way to uh, add a couple more lights to your kit at a lower price point and they just work fantastic uh, for this type of use case. And then back on the other side, basically repeating that same scenario where I've got a, a large umbrella with another FJ200 up there giving us that extra kind of edge slash rim light. And let me give you a shot from the player's perspective. So if I'm standing here, you can kind of see how offset this light is instead of being centered in front of my player. I've got it over here and feathering the light over here uh, to my player's face. And here's the camera setup, or well, the computer setup. Uh, camera using the Canon R5 with the uh, 24 to 70. And I'm using an Area 51 uh, tether cable today. I'm gonna try that out. Uh, they sent those to me, and so I'm gonna kind of give that a run. But tethering straight in here, these are pictures straight out of the camera. And so with that tether set up there, the players can see immediately the results we're getting here on set, and that gives me a chance to uh, work with them in a way where we can you know, play off of what we're getting and I can direct them to where we want to go if we need to. Also, it gets them super excited about what we're doing. Uh, the results just look fantastic with this type of setup. And the Prolight mods give us that big game stadium look straight out of camera. And that's what the magic is using these uh, modifiers. It uh, just makes life so much easier uh, for us as photographers and getting who we're working with excited about what we're doing. So uh, from here, I'll send it back to the studio and probably run over a couple other things that uh, I missed covering uh, right here doing this in person. All right, so as promised, I'm gonna run through some of these items that I've used, uh, or that I used on this shoot that I might not have used in shoots before or I uh, just feel like they need to be discussed a little bit more based off of uh, the results that I got by using those in this uh, shoot. First off though, let's just run through my camera settings. I use the uh, Canon R5, the 24 to 70, uh, 2 8, and I had it set right around F5 through this shoot. Um, my sync speed was uh, 1 200th, and that gave me, obviously that's the max sync, sync, sync speed uh, for this camera, but it also, in some of the shots that we'll talk about in a little bit, it gave me the correct ambient that I was looking for when I was just doing uh, some backlit images, just using the four ProLight modded lights in the background. So uh, that was basically my setup here. Uh, let me talk about the most important part of it though was the ISO. And I was running 400 ISO on this shoot. Uh, these cameras these days, you can really crank up the ISO and not really even see it in the uh, resulting images like you could um, probably a couple years back with some older cameras. So a camera like the R5 uh, ISO 400, what that does is gives me uh, the opportunity to use less power through my battery powered strobes. And with this setup, I quickly learned having those four lights above the backdrops uh, to take those down, replace the batteries, and then run them back up. I didn't have a ladder. That would have made things a whole lot easier. But to reposition those lights, it was um, a bit, it was pretty time consuming. So uh, between you know, that and knowing that I can conserve the rest of my batteries as well, and knowing that ISO 400 was not going to affect the end images, I just went up in ISO, saved battery power on everything on the set, and I believe I didn't have to change a battery the entire time that I was shooting. And that uh, is a testament to the FJ400 battery capacity as well. So 
I, but there was one day that I went down to, I think they were on one bar on the, those four lights in the background, and those were the, the lights that had the most power going through those. I believe they were set around 6.5 on the, the scale there for the FJ400. So the good bit of light going through those, I wasn't using them all the time, uh, but I just was hoping to conserve those batteries and just simply raising my ISO, ISO to 400 allowed me to do that. So that was one of the main things uh, that uh, uh, I guess changed for my normal settings for this shoot. And that, I want, I want to kind of give you an alternative too. So the, I was using the 2.8 lens uh, and I was around F5. So the 2.8 was not really necessary. So, you know, if you're budget conscious and looking for a good studio lens, I, I could recommend the 24 to 105, the F4 version, which would have been perfectly fine. It actually would have given me a little more range uh, through the spectrum there with, and you get a little bit um, extended reach with the 105. The thing that got me, and I'll segue to it too, uh, I was using a Pro Mist. So this is the Tiffin uh, 1 8 Black Pro Mist, and this is the 82 millimeter. I don't have, this is a 77, I believe, on this F4 lens. Yes, this is a 77 millimeter, and I didn't have the step up ring with me, and I'd only have the 82 version of this Pro Mist. So I had the 2.8 in my bag and just put that on, use this Pro Mist basically uh, all week. I will show a before and after uh, without and then with this. And it just, when you work that backlighting uh, with the mods in the background, this just makes your life a lot easier because uh, you don't necessarily need the smoke uh, around those lights and it'll give it that kind of bloom, that flare kind of feel. And I'm also catching it off of the reflector versions of, let me show you this, the uh, FJ200s. So this is probably the most extensive shoot that I've included these lights in. And I use them just as you see them right here with the reflectors on them. And these were, as you saw from the behind the scenes um, kind of uh, walk, walk through the setup, these I used for kind of my main rim lights and they were, they worked fantastic. And along with talking about uh, raising my ISO in the camera to 400, I'm trying to remember, I might've changed these batteries once or twice, but only one time during the shoot, uh, but it might've had to do it a couple days. Uh, but the capacity of these batteries, were great. These lights, if you are looking for to maybe add one or two lights to your kit, uh, this is a great budget friendly way to do that, especially if you can use them with these uh, reflectors. Uh, they'll fit right in with your more powerful light. So uh, great piece of kit here. I'm gonna put, by the way, I'm gonna put links to all this stuff down below so you don't have to go uh, looking around for them. You can just go down below in the description and click on these links if you're interested uh, in any of these products. All right, one other thing that you might have noticed, sitting right here in front of me, I was shooting in, into a laptop this time in instead of the larger iMac. And I had to concede the screen size uh, for speed in the computer. Uh, my iMac now is around seven or eight years old and the file is just coming out of these cameras and as quick as I'm shooting them in some cases, it just slows down a little too much for my liking. I like to have uh, everything pop up right there so the guys can see what we're doing. And these new uh, MacBook Pros are uh, the best solution for that currently. Uh, and you know maybe uh, a new iMac will come out in the future with the larger screen and I'll revert back to that. But uh, for the speed, I went with uh, this computer over my iMac. And then to tether to the iMac, uh, for this shoot, I used a new cable, uh, tethering cable, and this is from uh, Area 51 Tether Company. This is a super long cable. If you've watched any of my other behind the scenes videos from like these football shoots, a lot of times uh, <laughs> I could have used uh, 30 feet. I think this one here, this is the Los Alamos XL Pro uh, and it's got the uh, right angle with the USB-C which I highly recommend if you're going to do this. This goes, uh, gives you that lower profile. The, the cable doesn't stick out of the uh, camera. Uh, but yeah, this, this cable is 31 feet and it was more than enough than, than I needed um, for this shoot. Worked fantastic. It's a thinner cable than like the Tether Tools uh, and I'm not an expert on these, these cables, but it 
absolutely did the job. So couldn't be happier with this. And I now know that if I need a longer cable for uh, some of my upcoming jobs, this is what I'll go with. A couple other things uh, from this set. Uh, you notice I used uh, three of the large umbrellas. And uh, that is because I'm doing so many different things with these players. They're, they're moving around. I do have like a specific mark uh, where I'm hoping to keep them centralized, but uh, I've just come to learn that they're going to move all around the set. We do some action sequences as well. And those umbrellas just cast a lot of light, kind of creates this bubble of light to where that athlete can kind of be within that realm and I still get great usable images. So that's the reasoning uh, for those umbrellas. Also, my fill umbrella. Uh, that was uh, probably more to control uh, the fall off on the side of the face. Uh, fortunately, or I guess in this case, they were wearing uh, white pants. So I didn't really, I wasn't so concerned with the fill light as, unless they, you know, I guess had I been, if they would have been wearing a darker uh, uniform color. So with the white, that kind of gave me a little more leeway. And you'll see as we move through this video, I'll show where I actually turn off that fill light for a lot of the images. Um, but that was kind of the, the main use case and, and why I was using those large umbrellas. Uh, another aspect, huge aspect of some of these images you'll see are the smoke that we used. And I'll link the uh, smoke machine, show you the smoke machine that I used. Big piece of, at least in my opinion, of that smoke machine is the fact that it has a remote. And I probably talked about this maybe in the video last year, but use the same smoke machine as last year. Uh, I will link that obviously below, but this is a huge piece of that, just where you can have someone offset hitting the button uh, instead of being tethered to uh, <laughs> that smoke machine. So uh, I couldn't be happier with that smoke machine. And it, as you'll see in some of these images, it really takes them to uh, the next level along with that backlighting that we did. And there's one last thing I want to cover, something I've never used before, and that is the uh, X-Drop, uh, I've got one right here, the X-Drop Pro backdrops from Westcott. And if I'm being perfectly honest, when I first saw those, uh, I thought they might be a little gimmicky, um, but let me say, having used uh, three of them on this set, as you saw from the, from the video, I don't think I'll ever go back to the old school um, with the two poles and, and the crossbar and then hang in the fabric across there or, you know, God forbid, we got to um, run paper. Uh, but if I can get away with using those fabric backdrops, I'm going to be using these. And let me show you the case. I am definitely going to be using uh, these uh, from here on out as much as I can, uh, unless there's some other kind of specific use case where I have to you go back to the old school uh, you know, crossbar type backdrop. These things were just really, they're fantastic, easy to put up, especially if you're doing it um, like a solo setup. Uh, I, it is so much easier than having to go to one side, raise it up a little bit, go to the other side, raise it up. Those of you, those of you who have had to do that, you know what I'm talking about. This right here is super easy uh, and uh, obviously, when you set up the old school ones too, you need clamps to tighten the backdrop to keep any kind of wrinkles out and stuff. And that this guy do, are, automatically does that. Uh, I will say, I wish it was a little bit taller. As you could see, I use the uh, FJ 400 cases to give me 12 more inches. Uh, these come, I think they're eight feet uh, high. With the, uh, using the cases, I was able to get them up to nine feet uh, and then drop the lights over the top, which uh, turned out to be perfect for the use case I needed. Uh, and I, I've used the, um, for that shoot, I was using the eight by 13, which gave that extra fabric down at the bottom that I could kind of roll under in this case. The eight by eight would be perfect for any kind of like headshots or waist up, thigh up type images, but it does leave a gap down at the, uh, the base of it. So I knew I was gonna be shooting full body for this shoot. And so I opted for the eight by 13 uh, backdrops, but Cannot be happier with the X-Drop Pros. All right, so now let's take a look at each one of these lights and see what they were doing for us on set. Okay, so first off is just my main light. So this is uh, the Ortiz, Manny Ortiz, the 36 inch beauty dish. You can see I'm getting some pretty good coverage and I mentioned the white pants earlier. You can kind of see it doesn't take much light to illuminate uh, anything white on this uniform. And so that is that one light by itself. Let's go to the, uh, this is the, with the main light plus my fill light, which is off to 
uh, my right hand shoulder, I guess. Uh, and so you can see where I'm getting a little more fill on those pants and you can see on the ground down here where what that's doing down uh, there, there as well when I can talk. All right, so let's go over here to the left side. This is the left umbrella by itself. So I'm getting a nice edge down the arm here, down the pants and getting his feet, the sock, all that kind of good stuff there. A little bit on the face here. The right umbrella. Now, so what I did here too is the right umbrella is, is kicking a little bit, a couple of tenths more than the left umbrella. And part of that reasoning is I've got my main light over here and I've got this shadow fall off on this side. And so what I like to do is kick a little bit more of a highlight opposite of my main light. And so that kind of uh, gives a little more drama here to the face where the shadow will be right here. So we'll take a look at that in a second. These are the reflectors, uh, the two reflectors, the FJ200s that I was just talking about. You can kind of see what these are bringing in. Uh, and this is with the Pro Mist filter. You can see I'm catching these uh, little uh, flares off the lens, or off the filter, really. Uh, so this is where I'm getting uh, some more of these accent lights. And you can see just those little lights. I'm getting light all the way down to his feet from where they were placed in this setup. Uh, so these are the edges. Basically, this is the combination of those four lights, the uh, reflectors and the umbrellas. So that's uh, without the umbrellas, and then that is with the umbrellas. So you can kind of see, this is what I like to do. I like to use those, those four lights in combination to create these edges on my athletes uh, in this case. Uh, now let's go to the backlight. Uh, this is just with these four uh, mod lights, the uh, one by four uh, rapid box switch uh, boxes, and you can kind of see just what these are doing for me. And this is with, there's a little bit of smoke coming. They were running video while I was doing this test. So that's where we're picking up this, this flaring here um, for, you know, in these examples. So it, the examples are getting thrown off a little bit, but uh, it's just because of the smoke that was filtering over from the video set. Uh, so this is, uh, I ran some shots here with this setup too, with the mods up here and the reflectors, the FJ200s and then the 400s back here in the mods. Uh, and that was giving me this look, and we'll, I will, I'll show you some results here in a minute. Uh, and I use this a good bit as well. Uh, so here uh, is the full edge on, on my, my talent here, plus the mods. So you can see this is bringing the reflectors and the umbrellas and the mods behind him. This is everything, this is my main light, this is everything but the fill light. And once again, you can see the smoke's filtering in, and this is kind of throwing off some of my contrast on the front of my talent. but. Uh, it's still a pretty good example because then here is everything. This is with the uh, fill light. So this is the full setup. This is all, what is it, 10 lights, I think. Uh, so this is everything kicking at one time. And uh, so you can kind of see where, where I started and where I ended with everything. So in this next section, we'll jump in and I'll show you the combinations that I would change on the top of my camera. And we'll look at some of the results that were created uh, by using different combinations of these lights just on the fly. Uh, and that is kind of the magic of uh, these lighting systems where you can set your lights into groups. I had each one of these uh, set up into groups uh, th that we just went through. So every one of these lights was set up into groups. The mod lights were all in their one group, but every other, and the reflectors were in their group. But all the other ones were individually controlled on the top of my camera. So let's jump and we'll take a look at some of those results from the shoot. All right, so now let's take a look at how we use those different lights to create combinations where we could come up with some very unique images just within this one setup. All right, so I'm gonna jump in here and we'll see one of the uh, action shots. So I like to do some action shots with the guys and let me get in here so you can zoom in. Uh, that's the magic of using a camera like the R5. It gives me plenty of room. Plenty of resolution where if I need to crop in, I can uh, pull into these images. It's still not even 100%. So here's 100% right here. Uh, and this is just an example. This one's uh, straight out of camera. Uh, once again, it looks like there might be a little bit of haze coming from the other set. Uh, and basically a curb adjustment would bring down these blacks and, and then uh, just correct this uh, contrast on my subject right here. 
And if y'all wanna see more of these types of shots, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll see about maybe putting together a uh, video maybe of going through some of these results and, and how I might tweak them a little bit. Uh, that's another thing just about this lighting setup. And these, the goal is to create these images straight out of camera to where when I hand these off to my clients, they really don't have to do much uh, lifting whatsoever uh, to have something to use and you can do a vertical crop on this and you've got these lights up here uh, and that just makes a uh, you know, it's it's really what sets it apart from from you know, possibly other setups all right so let's move on ahead so here's another one with the lights on we kicked on some smoke this is everything uh, it's set for my fill light and you can't see the mark but i know my player's mark is probably right over in this area a little bit and as I mentioned before about using those big umbrellas, uh, using kind of this lighting setup and how I've engineered it together over years, it allows me to take images of these guys pretty much, uh, it doesn't matter where they are, you know, regardless of where they're standing, and I can usually get something to work with, especially, uh, you know, something like, like this here where he's actually in front of his mark a little bit, a little bit closer to camera, and a little bit even off center more, which is, giving us this extra uh, drama on his face here. And then without the uh, fill light on, that actually, you know, that is increasing the shadow uh, that we're getting right here. And then with the camera position, I am in camera actively moving around uh, my composition with these lights uh, back here. And so then I'm able to frame him up kind of with these lights coming across, you know, as if this is in the stadium. And like I said, that's kind of how we built this setup to replicate uh, the lights over at the stadium. And uh, it was so much fun during the shoot when the guys would see these images come across on the computer and it was just like magic. To, and they just were like, oh, <laughs> it looks like we're actually in the stadium. So when that was being said, I knew I was hitting on what I wanted to, uh, to create here. All right, so this is 100% backlit. Just the mods here, just the smoke machine kicking that smoke out. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, my exposure was a 200th of a second. If I wanted a little bit more fill here, I could have uh, slowed that down a little bit, but I really like this dark and moody, moody type feel. With these LEDs in these stadiums now, they have the, the ability to flick them off uh, with the switch and everything goes dark and then they can you know, selectively control these lights. So this is actually kind of something that you see these days in these modern stadiums with the uh, LED lights installed. So. Uh, everyone was, was really liking this look and it was, it's just really cool when you kind of envision something like this prior to the shoot and you're able to execute it uh, like this and, and give this really dramatic type feel. Uh, and this is uh, the same lighting with the mods here, backlighting, but I turned on the reflectors, the FJ200s, uh, and so you're getting a little more uh, lighting on the edges of my subject here. And I played around with this during during the shoot, and I would turn it on sometimes and keep them off uh, other times, but you can tell there's a distinct difference uh, when you have this extra light kind of outlining your player, kind of brings him forward a little bit in the image. Uh, and it was just a matter of taste and, and what I was feeling and what was going on in front of me. And, and so, and it was very simple to uh, switch those uh, around. And then uh, here's another one. I actually put a little bit of a color grade on this one, just cooled it a little bit, kind of give it more of a movie cinematic type feel. Uh, this is just backlit once again uh, with the smoke. I had my player come closer to me. And so then that, you know, you're dropping off focus on these lights back here, plus he becomes bigger in the frame uh, and just give you, and with the angle up too, it kind of gives you that heroic feel, plus he's got his finger up in the air uh, as well. Uh, and also in this one too, uh, just as a note, since I, I went in and did a little color grade on this one, and then I removed, as you can see, the roof of the indoor building. And so right here, actually in this area, I used the new generative fill in the Photoshop beta to uh, remove that and it just it did a great job extending out what was going on in the bottom half of this frame uh, just with basically a selection and a button click. So that's, that's everything that's going on in this frame here. Uh, I want to show you one more example. So this is uh, completely backlit and this is one of those use cases where I realized I needed more light on my subject to pull this image off. I mean this is still you know, it's still a pretty neat uh, image of what's going on here. But for me, I needed to capture this emotion 
that you see going on right here. And so what I did is I turned on uh, my main light, had him redo that, uh, that pose and captured it like this. So that's kind of part of watching what you're, what you're capturing. Uh, you know, on the fly kind of seeing, you know, what it is you can do differently to uh, enhance the images that you're ca catching at, at that time. Uh, but you can kind of see the difference there. And I'll be, I'll go with this one all day long for this type of uh, pose that's, that's going on. So I hope these uh, examples um, kind of tell some of the story of what we had going on on set. I want to just kind of point out uh, the remote here. This is basically what I use to uh, to make everything happen. Uh, Godox, I know that it's the same type system. I've used both of both them, but I was using the uh, FJX3M uh, for this shoot. And as I mentioned, I had all my lights set up into uh, groups where I could, on the top of my camera, I could turn off and on the groups based off of what I wanted to do. Uh, just like that last example I just showed you where I ended up turning on my main light uh, when I saw what came up, when I saw the image come across on the computer. So uh, it was, it's just a dynamic photo shoot. I love uh, spending a week with the, the team over here. Also want to say too, uh, it all started with just a diagram, just uh, sitting in here kind of thinking about what it was or what it, yeah, what I wanted to pull off uh, with this photo shoot. And so I just started uh, writing down or drawing to the best of my ability, uh, the modifiers that I was gonna use, the lights and that type of thing. And then that enabled me to, in my head, kind of get everything straight. So when we went over and set things up, uh, it was pretty seamless. I did have a couple of lights in here with like question marks, whether or not I was gonna bring an overhead uh, at one point, I thought I might put a uh, reflector kind of behind the players uh, with maybe a gel, like a red gel or something like that to kind of hit that smoke. It turned out that it was just a lot smoother, and I realized this as we were doing test shots uh, the day before the shootout when we actually set all this up. But I realized that that was going to probably slow down uh, the process if I had a light kind of in the middle uh, and we would lose that uh, ability of the players to kind of be able to move around and do, you know, act, act freely within this setup. Uh, and so we opted to not uh, use that um, part of it. But that's just kind of goes to show that, you know, not everything was hammered out here, but this was an excellent starting point and something I like to do. Plus, now I have this and I can uh, file this away if, if need be. Uh, and can come back to this type of setup uh, in the future and be able to kind of uh, recreate, remember what it was that I did. Uh, although I do have, <laughs> you can just go back and watch my own videos if I wanted to. But, well, I hope that uh, y'all might have learned something here. If you feel like this video is worthy, please hit that thumbs up. And you want to see more content just like this in the future, hit that subscribe button down there along with the little bell so uh, it'll notify you when I'm back on here. Uh, you can find me on social media at Quants Photo on Instagram and Twitter or X as it is now. Uh, also, uh, the ProLight Mods, uh, check us out over on Instagram. Uh, and then the ProLight Mod user Facebook group, too, is another great resource for those of you who are interested in using these mods. Any other questions or comments? Anything else you kind of would like to possibly see uh, from a shoot like this? I do have... Uh, some behind the scenes footage uh, that I will probably put in a different video. I usually put those like on my Patreon where I've got a 360 camera. Uh, I'll do a like talking commentary through uh, working with one or two of the players and uh, drop that, um, put that all together and put that on the Patreon page. Uh, so if you're interested in that, check out the uh, Patreon link below. All the links for the products, once again, they'll be down below. Y'all stay safe and healthy out there and I will be here soon again in the next one.